Many managers have won multiple league titles. Many managers have won multiple Champions League trophies. Many managers have won multiple domestic cups. But there's only one who's won more than one continental treble. Yes, this is the story of these continental trebles and how they came to be. Consider subscribing to our channel. It's free and helps us a ton. Thanks. Yes, of course, we're talking about Pep Guardiola, the only manager to have won two continental trebles in his career. It isn't easy winning trophies. It's even harder to win two in a season. So doing trebles twice in his career, that's special. We have covered Pep's career as a whole. We have covered his Barca tenure. We have covered his Manchester City tenure. But winning the treble twice? That is some accomplishment and worth its own coverage. But more importantly, how it came to be and the stark contrast in the two trebles a decade and a half apart. Let's go back in time. It is 2008. Barcelona is in turmoil and has just finished third, 18 points behind the champions and their arch rivals, Real Madrid. They are closer to finishing outside of the top four than in it, barely qualifying for the Champions League third qualifying round. After five seasons at the helm, Frank Rijkaard has just been sacked after failing to win any trophies for two consecutive seasons. The stalwarts like Ronaldinho stars are fading and many have left the club, including Ronaldinho himself and Deco. Messi's star is rising but he hasn't reached his potential yet. Amidst all this, the board announces the appointment of a first team coach who, while famous as a player, is still a novice, having coached only the Barcelona B team for a season before this. What can you expect from him? How can he match up to the Galacticos of Real Madrid? These questions are only compounding. The first league game rolls in and Barcelona are stunned by Numancia, a club that has spent only four seasons in the top flight in all of its existence, that gets relegated in this very season to never come back up, losing away to them 1-0. Second game. Barca draws one all at home against Racing. No, 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 no. Not a good start. Well, they win the next two, but doubts still swirl about. Some question the intricate passing, other question the questionable defense. This article by Guardian sums up the overall feeling around Barca and Real Madrid at the time. This specific passage particularly was telling. Quote, Barcelona smash Sporting 6-1. Three days later, Madrid smash Sporting 7-1. Anything you can do better, I can do better. End quotes. So what does Barca do to shake off the shaky feelings? What can Barca do to show the world that they still belong, especially with a young manager at the helm? Well, they do the only thing they can win so they do they win and they win and they win and they draw a game at home to getafe but they still win and win some more the script of the season has completely flipped by the time real madrid shows up at camp nou barca is firmly sitting at the top of la liga having won 11 of the 12 games since drawing with racing at the beginning of the season madrid is struggling and Barca is flying high. And at Camp Nou, this proves to be the case again, as Barca beats Real 2-0 through goals late in the game by Eto and Messi. Apart from a blip here or there, like losing to Espanyol at home and Atletico Madrid away back-to-back, -back, Barca dominates the league. They climb to the top of the league on the ninth match day and are not ready to leave it at any cost. But the title race is heating up. It's match day 34. It is now Barca's turn to go to Santiago Bernabeu. Real is just 5 points behind Barca with 5 games to go, so that title race is pretty much on. Barca is in a good form, but so is Real. 
but nobody could have predicted what came next. Barca demolishes Real Madrid 6-2. They completely tear them apart in what is an exemplary display of pep ball. The match may have taken a lot out of both sets of teams because both Barcelona and Real Madrid completely fall off. Barca accrues only two points from the next four games. Real loses all four. But it doesn't matter. The draw against Real at home pretty much guarantees the title for Barca. Barca has done it. Pep has done it. Barcelona is the league champion after not winning anything for the previous two seasons. Time to open the bottle of champagne? Hold on. That's not where this season ends. They have a near-perfect Copa del Rey campaign, drawing only twice through the two-legged cup tournament. Barca beats Athletic Bilbao in the final, four goals to one. Domestic double? Done. But wait, there's more. Yep, it's the Champions League. Having to qualify through the third qualifying round, Barcelona makes short work of Isla Krakow, the Polish club 4-1 on aggregate, and sails through the group stage winning four of the six games, winning their group. Lyon gets swept aside 6-3 on aggregate and Bayern Munich is no match for Pep's Barca, beaten 5-1 on aggregate. Then comes the semi-final match against Chelsea. The match is close and both teams are inseparable after over 180 minutes of football. The second leg is marred by controversy and poor refereeing, where Barca comes back to equalize in the third minute of injury time through Iniesta. Drawing the second leg, one all. Barca wins on the away goals and advances to the final to meet Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United. The final at the Stadio Olimpico, Rome, begins frantically as Man United apply early pressure. Guardiola's men, however, absorb the pressure and go ahead when Eto scores from an Andres Iniesta pass. The goal shifts it in Barca's favour as now United begin to struggle. Despite Sir Alex's tactical shift and later going all out attack, United fails to score. And in the 70th minute, Messi completes the job heading in. Yes, Champions League winners, Barcelona. After two years, Barca has done it again. They are the European champions for the third time. La Liga, Copa del Rey and now Champions League. He's done it. In his very first season, this unproven manager has done it. A special record achieved by a special manager. At the time, nobody knew how this manager would fare. Was it a fluke? Was it destiny? Was Cruyff's disciple even better than the great man himself? Well, let's see. Fast forward 13 years. The year is 2022. Pep Guardiola is now an accomplished manager in his seventh season at Manchester City. His four years at Barca yielded 14 trophies and three years at Bayern yielded another seven. The previous six years at Man City have already resulted in four Premier Leagues, four EFL Cups and an FA Cup. The man is already regarded as one of the best in the business. However, somewhere in his resume is a perceived gap. Yes, you guessed it. Since 2011, Guardiola hasn't won a single Champions League. Now, some may say, winning one Champions League trophy in itself is huge. Winning two of them is damn near impossible. And Guardiola had already won two. So why is this even called a gap? Well, because it's Pep. Not only is he touted as one of the best managers in the world, but he's also someone who's always had access to vast resources, be it Barcelona, Bayern Munich or Manchester City. To his naysayers, it doesn't matter how many leagues or domestic trophies he wins, it's all about the Champions League. Winning two with Messi in his team isn't good enough. He should have won more, because domestic trophies are easy for him, or that's what his critics say. Never mind the fact that till 2022, as a manager, he had won 
10 league titles in 13 active seasons in three different countries. No manager ever has done that. Not Alex Ferguson, not Jurgen Klopp, not anybody else. But no. No, 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 no. That's not good enough. Where are his Champions League trophies with Bayern and Manchester City? He can't do it without Messi. Or so it is said. In this time, he reached the Champions League final once and blew it against Chelsea. He reached quarterfinals and semi finals constantly without winning. He's simply not good enough, his detractors told us. As 2022 rolls in, Pep Guardiola's men, the defending Premier League champions, embark on yet another season where they're expected to win the Premier League and maybe one of the domestic cups too. But the Champions League? Nah, that's a trophy too far. Not after the way they lost to Real Madrid last season. It's just not happening. The 2022-23 season begins with a loss to Liverpool in the Community Shield. That's fine. That happens. The league season begins. The defending Premier League champions are doing good, but are as not as hot as some other seasons. Then the league form falters. Unlike other seasons, City is just not able to string along a series of wins in the league. Doesn't help that this is a winter World Cup season which is guaranteed to disrupt the season for everyone. And disrupt it does. Manchester City is falling behind Arsenal who under Arteta are rejuvenated. February rolls in with both Arsenal and Man City locked in a fierce title race when a bombshell is dropped. The Premier League has charged Manchester City with 115 counts of financial breaches. Despite City winning at the Emirates and momentarily taking the lead from Arsenal, they are patchy and are just not playing to the best of their abilities. And now with the Premier League charges hanging over their head, can they even perform? By 1st April, Arsenal has pulled ahead of Manchester City by 8 points and City's campaign seems doomed. And then it all changes. Arsenal go on a four-game winless streak, drawing against Liverpool, West Ham and Southampton and losing to Manchester City as the defence seems to be falling apart. Meanwhile, Manchester City has locked in and they beat Arsenal at Etihad while embarking upon their customary 12-game win streak. The script is flipped. Manchester City goes on to win the Premier League with three games in hand without even having to step on the field as Arsenal implodes or bottles or whichever term you feel is fitting here. Third consecutive Premier League title for Manchester City and Pep. Fifth league title in six seasons. Pep has done it again. But hold on, there's more. Manchester City's FA Cup campaign suffered none of their league form issues. Manchester City beat Chelsea 4-0 to begin their FA Cup campaign. Before Manchester City beat Arsenal twice in the league, they beat Arsenal in the FA Cup fourth round. Then Bristol City, Burnley and Sheffield United fell to City 3-0, 6-0 and 3-0 respectively. City made it to the FA Cup final without conceding a single goal. Such was their dominance in the cup. And the cherry on top. It is Manchester United in the final. Wembley beckons. And boy how the final goes. A record 13 second goal. A sort of ward penalty and a scuffed shot later. Manchester City are crowned the FA Cup winners. Premier League, check. FA Cup, check. The domestic double is done and dusted. But surely that's where the story ends right? Surely Pep's Champions League hoodoo, his penchant for making weird changes for important Champions League games gets the better of him, right? Manchester City go through the Champions League group stage without losing a single game and they win their group. They demolish RB Leipzig at home 7-0 and beat them 8-1 on aggregate. Well, this is kind of expected of them. Nothing new. Quarterfinals rolls in. Bayern Munich rolls into Etihad. City demolished them 3-0 too. The away game barely matters as City steamrolls Bayern 4-1 on aggregate. So far, so good. 
but here comes Real Madrid in the semi-final. The same stage they broke City Hearts last season. Away at Santiago Bernabeu, one all. Madrid comes to Etihad. Everyone remembers the last time they met in the second leg of the Champions League semi-final. What happened next though? Blew everyone away. De Bruyne through to Bernardo Silva. Get it. Courtois not keeping that one out. Run into the box and find Gundogan. And now it's Bernardo Silva. In from De Bruyne. But this is huge for them tonight. And here's Alvarez! First touch. 5-1 over the two ties. The greatest team in Europe in the history of this competition have been blown out of sight. Manchester City plays the best football they may have ever played. They demolish Madrid 4-0, finish the game 5-1 on aggregate, and thus, here we are. Ah. Manchester City vs Inter Milan in Istanbul. Surely Pep's luck has run out. Surely Pep doesn't win this one. The Ataturk Stadium witnesses a humdinger of a final. 35th minute. City's talisman Kevin De Bruyne is injured. For the second time in the Champions League final, Kevin De Bruyne is injured. And we all remember what happened the last time KDB was injured. It all seems so, so similar to the last time. The first half passes. No goals. Both teams locked in at nil-nil. The Chelsea game comes to mind. The second half. A huge mistake by Akanji, but Inter fails to capitalize. 69th minute. Rodri from the edge of the box. The deadlock is broken. Finally. But it's not done yet. Inter turns on the pressure and comes close to equalizing a couple of times. But it wasn't meant to be. The final whistle blows. Manchester City 1, Inter Milan 0. It's done. Manchester City has done it. Pep has done it. The trouble nobody thought was possible for City has finally been achieved. The continental trouble was coming to the Etihad. So, what's the difference between the two Pep trebles? For starters, Pep was a complete novice, a newbie in terms of managerial experience at Barca when he did the treble. The Barca team played a brand of football very few had ever seen at the time. By the time he did his treble at City though, he was a veteran, a 15-year veteran of managing in top flight football. His City team setup, especially the treble winning one, was so different from the one that won it a decade and a half ago at Barca. The Barca team is probably an ideal Pep team. The ultimate form of Tiki Taka, the ultimate form of Juego de Posicion. Intricate passing triangles, high lines, advancing full backs. The treble winning City team had quite a few of those qualities, but a more pragmatic approach where damage limitation was also part of the equation. Like playing four centre-backs in the back line against Bayern or John Stones, the centre-back slotting in beside Rodri to offer more protection to the back line as well as a passing outlet. Two very pleasing teams on the eyes. Both for different reasons. Two trebles for Pep. Doing one is an honour. Doing two is writing your name in immortality. Pep has done that. We've already talked a lot about Pep and his various achievements, but this takes the cake as this is the most unprecedented of them all. Here's to many more years of Pep achievements and may we all live to witness them in person. Thank you for watching. Like if you liked it, share if you found it worthy and subscribe for more content like this. This is Salty Football.